Let's pivot to weather now. Let's take a live look outside. Nice evening across Denver. Got a little taste of what might be maybe felt like summer today and look for more of that tomorrow. Lauren Robinson joins us now. Enjoy it because changes are coming. That's right. Denver got a couple of wins today. We got that hockey win at DU, and then the entire city got a win with our weather. Boy, was it beautiful. And we have another one in store tomorrow with even warmer weather before, yes, wet changes move in for the next work week. Let's go ahead and take a look at our afternoon highs. Today we made it to 78 degrees at DIA. Most of the front range in eastern plains is in the upper 70s to lower 80s. And then as you make your way further east, take a look. We were in the upper 80s across the plains. 88 was the high in Ray. 89 was the high in Lamar. The high country not too bad. We got some 50s and 60s there. Still pretty warm for that area. We saw lots of 70s across the western slope. Now temperatures, of course, cooling a bit now that we're at 9 o'clock in the evening. Still pretty warm for this time of night, though. 59 degrees at DIA. The front range at Eastern Plains mostly sitting in the 50s. Some areas still warm enough to be in the 60s. 30s, 40s, low 50s in the high country. 40s, 50s, 60s across the western slope. Quiet across the HD Doppler radar as we take a look at Colorado. We stay quiet overnight and into tomorrow, but we will watch for some increased fire weather danger tomorrow and again Monday with all of this dry air, these gusty winds. This will mostly stay east and south of Denver, but you still want to be aware across the urban corridor. So coming up in my full seven day forecast, we're going to talk about this warm weekend continuing. We'll talk more about that fire weather danger to the south. We're also going to talk about several chances for rain next week. All of that just ahead. Lauren, thank you. A party in Lakewood overnight ended with a shooting. Police say the victim, a teenage boy, is now critically injured. Nine News reporter Rhea Ja reports from Lakewood tonight, walking us through the investigation so far. I briefly spoke with the mother of the boy who was shot on this street. She says he is in critical condition, undergoing treatment, and it's going to be a long night for their family as they wait and see if he survives this. A neighbor's security camera caught at least 16 gunshots. In a matter of seconds. In between muffled yells and screams. At 3.52 a.m. on Saturday, Lakewood police responded to the driveway of this house on Garrison Street. Our preliminary investigation revealed that it was a party at this location which ended with a altercation between the partygoers and which ended up with the subsequent shooting. A teenage boy is now fighting for his life in the hospital. His mother telling Nine News he was shot in the head. I think it's more concerning that our teens are ending these altercations in, in these violent means. We have to figure out how they're getting a hold of these weapons and then why they're being used in these manners. So far this year, Nine News has reported on six parties in the Denver metro area ending in shootings. We understand that our youth are going to make mistakes when this type of violence is occurring, that it's not just a mistake, that this is a life altering mistake and that's what we have to try to stop. Police say their investigation is ongoing and believe that this was an isolated incident and there is no threat to the community at this time. Reporting in Lakewood, Rhea Cha, 9 News. It was a violent weekend across the metro. In Denver, another teenage boy was killed last night after a person who was also young shot him. This happened around 1030 on North Walnut at 38. This is near the Rhino Beer Garden. The 17 year old died at the hospital. Police told us these boys knew each other the suspected shooting shooter is in custody now on investigation of manslaughter. We do not know the suspect's age, just that he is younger than 18. In Aurora, a teenage boy is seriously hurt after a fight led to a chase and ultimately ended in a shooting. Police say this started a little after midnight at a gas station as an argument between two different groups in different cars. It ended with a shooting right off of 225 near 70. Police say the teenage victim should survive his injuries. There were three other people in that same car, two young adults and another kid under 18. Police do not believe the suspect and the victim knew each other. A family in Denver has been left without a home tonight after a fire spread through three houses. It happened just before noon at 39th and Clay in northwest Denver. According to Denver Fire, nine buildings were involved with this fire. Three were homes, the other six were sheds or detached garages. Neighbors tell firefighters they heard a loud explosion right before the fire. Crews are still looking to exactly how this one started. Nobody got hurt. And it's now been a week since an apartment building in southeast Denver caught fire, leaving a whole bunch of people without homes. Strong winds a weekend ago fueled this fire, made it especially tough to put out. Tonight, a dozen families at the Tava Waters complex still can't go home. And we spoke to one of them who said 
The fire was a shock in itself, but they had another surprise when they went back to check their renter's insurance. They realized their belongings weren't covered at all. But how it was explained to us was you can either get your, your own insurance or you can use ours. So we were like, okay, we'll just make it easy. We'll use yours. Everybody that goes with their insurance, it only covers the structure of the building and their personal property only, nothing for us. They tell us that they purchased that policy through the apartment complex while they signed their lease. It was an extra $14 a month. We've reached out to that complex to ask for comment. So far, no response.